it can actually be quite a challenge. You know, a number of studies have been done uh, to look at the, how long does it take for, what's the average time it takes for a patient to be diagnosed? Um, a patient with the, the non-advanced form um, can take up to seven years for a diagnosis. We've heard terrible stories about patients going back and forth between different allergists and liver doctors and dermatologists to try to understand their diagnosis until someone um, identifies it. Even in the advanced cases in which patients can be extremely sick, um, it can take up to two years sometimes um, to diagnose this. And, and so a considerable amount of time uh, since this, the advanced forms are life-threatening may have already been used up in trying to figure out what disease uh, this patient has. In addition, we see misdiagnosis in addition to non-diagnosis. Um, one of the most common forms of advanced SM is something called SM with an associated hematological neoplasm. That is a patient also has myelodysplastic syndrome or chronic monomonocytic leukemia. And because the SM and mastocytosis is so rare, sometimes when the diagnosis is made, they just focus on this associated hematological neoplasm. So a patient is just has a diagnosis of MDS or CMML, and they completely miss this other half of their disease, which is now treatable. SM is a great pretender. It, it can actually cause a lot of different things. I think the classic thing that 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 gets people off most often is the presence of the rash. Um, the old name is called uticura pigmentosa. It's pigmented, it's itchy, unrelenting, causes flushing, but that's not in all cases. But sometimes the presentation is weight loss very significant weight loss. Sometimes the presentation is um, just refractory ascites, which is not typically something you get with many you know, heme malignancies. Um, and so people have to be aware. Um, sometimes also with the advent of, of sequencing and next generation sequencing, people are starting to pick up the kit mutation by itself, just incidentally, um, because it's commonly sequenced when, when looking at patients with myeloid disorders. And so that's another way to tip a patient off or tip a physician off that a patient has SM. Thank you.